so good so good it's good for me it's an avocado for goodness sakes a fun little sauce that i have for you healthiest version of a donut that i know of I am just organizing for what I am showing you today and I put this little table up which I don't know if you've seen before. Johnny from Johnny's Journey had helped me create this table for when things were over on this side. I had to revamp it a little bit when I got this new cabinet to fit over here and this works. It's nice and stable. I had to cut it off because I have my cooler here. I couldn't have a leg sticking out because it went all the way to here. So I had to redo that and that's why I have this thing. It's just as sturdy, but I can pull this off totally and then store it under here. So this is where I stored it. it, just slides right in there. And I just thought I'd show you that because I really haven't shown you that since I made that change. It's usually just, you probably see it, It's it goes up against here. But when I go over bumps and stuff, I have to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. So I have a bungee around there that secures it. But I thought I'd get this out because I'm cooking. So I'm going to show you some stuff. I did have some interesting comments last time. For me, food has everything to do with our health and well-being. And so as much as it is up to me, I try to buy foods that even though they may be a little bit more expensive up front, are in the long run going to save me money in terms of my health and well-being. So I will try to put the costs of what these ingredients are. I know it varies from state to state. It varies from store to store, but I'll give you ballpark figures so you can see what it is. Again, the items that I bought last time or a lot of them I was stocking up on again because I've been running low. And that is only necessary maybe once a month or once every two weeks, depending on what it is and how much I go through it. The main thing that I buy when I go into a store is the produce. So I will need fresh greens and things like that. And then I eat those in an order of how they kind of start wilting and getting bad. But I will try to eat all of it in some way or another. So I hope that helps you understand why I am willing to spend more on food that is organic. I also have some dietary restrictions and I do have to be careful with those restrictions. But I know that that is not always going to be possible. I am going to enjoy meals with people and when I'm out at a restaurant, if I can't find something that is all the things that I normally eat, I will go ahead and eat what is available, but I do what I can and even my junk food per se, <laughs> ask anybody who hangs with me, I will always be looking at the back of the package because I can't have certain things. But when I can find a junk food that I can have, like there have been so many times that I can't enjoy potato chips because they're made with corn oil or soy oil. So when I find one that isn't and it's organic, I'll eat that because I'm like, wow, I can actually eat potato chips. And there's these hip peas that are made from chickpea flour, and those are relatively the healthy version of whatever. I mean, they have the healthy version of all kinds of things that are bad for you. So I will eat those kinds of things when I find it because I want to have fun with my food too. And in no way, if you eat differently, am I saying that you need to eat like me? Honestly, like you do you, I'm doing me. And if what I'm doing is helping you, then enjoy it. And that is what I'm going to be doing today. I am also not vegan, which I think a lot of people think that I am. I eat that way because as someone mentioned, it is a lot harder if you are not a vegan because you have the meat products, you have the milk products, you have things that can go bad easier without refrigeration. So I think for me, I have tended toward eating vegan because it is easier to keep 
longer, at least the things that I eat. So in no way am I saying anything about vegan or non-vegan or vegetarian or pescatarian, whatever. I'll, I'll eat fish. I have tuna. I have sardines uh, that are canned because those things are high in protein. And for me, I need to get the protein. So those are the things I get protein from, tuna, salmon, and the little sardines. But they're packs, so they don't need refrigeration. Also, I am not a chef, so don't be expecting gourmet meals or anything like that. I am offering what I do, which is easy to prepare. That is key. Easy to prepare, nutritious, and pretty delicious. I've had people try my things and I think they're pretty good and most importantly can be prepared very easily in a vehicle of some sort. So that is what I offer you and yes this is not a cooking show so keep all of those comments down. I almost forgot I get asked so much about my toothpaste recipe so I need some and I will show it to you at the end of this video. I'm going to prepare it and show you how I do it. It's very simple, but I thought that I would do it since I need some and uh, it'll, it goes with all of the preparation stuff that I'm doing here. I'm going to show you a chocolate mousse that you make from avocados. Now, I know that that sounds really gross, but don't knock it till you've tried it. I haven't had regular chocolate mousse for such a long time, I don't even know the difference. To me, this tastes even better than the real thing, if I remember what the real thing tastes like. The key is to get an avocado that's not too yellow. So, for instance, this one would probably not be as good in the recipe as this one. Okay, I don't know if you see the difference, but to have it be the right flavor, you don't want it to be too unripe or too ripe because if it's underripe, it also has a weird kind of flavor. So get it to where it's like this, this consistency where you can scrape it and mush it. And then just get it out. And see how it just slides right out there. Mm. And it'll mush right up. So then these are my compost bags. They have a little lining so that food can stay in them and keep bugs away. But I'll put all of my scraps and stuff in that. But then see the consistency of it. It's really easy to smush. The color of it is not too brown or anything like that. Okay, so see how it gets really, really creamy there? And you don't want to have any chunks in there. So that's why you don't want an unripe one because then you'll still have chunks. And I don't have a blender or anything. Like if you have a food processor or a blender, do it in that. But I don't. I like think that's why it's so important for me to tell you to get a squishy one that you don't need to process it all. Now, and don't freak out by this, but it's so good, guys. So remember this cocoa that I have, the baking cocoa? This is uh, an organic from the Dominican Republic, actually, which is where I used to live. And you take about one, two, three, four, because this is important. The cocoa flavor needs to be almost overpowering so that you don't taste the avocado part. Then just mix it in, okay? That's uh, teaspoons. You can make two tablespoons or four teaspoons, I guess. So one medium size avocado, that one was pretty small, so this might be a little bit off. And then you start mixing this up and then you're gonna wanna put honey. And if you don't wanna use honey, you can use maple syrup and that will taste just as good. In terms of the honey or maple syrup, put about a tablespoon or two in there, depending on your taste. You'll have to taste it a couple times to get to know what your consistency is. So I wanna just show you. I don't have a refrigerator. So if you had a refrigerator, then you just refrigerate it until later. 
But for me, I just eat it right away because I love it. And it's good for me. It's an avocado, for goodness sakes. And it just has honey or maple syrup. So when I need a treat and want something fun for a dessert, this is what I have. If you mix it really well, you won't have... <laughs> You won't have any chunks of avocado in there and it tastes just like chocolate mousse. So this is an actually really surprising recipe, I think. Don't knock it until you've tried it. If it doesn't taste right for you, it could be because the avocados were either not ripe enough or too ripe or you need to add sweetener to your taste or play a little bit with the cocoa powder and see if you need less or more. Really the cocoa offsets the taste of the avocado and I have tried this with people and not told them what my mousse is made out of and when I tell them that it's avocado they are like what? Yes. So if you want a nutritious dessert try it. Chocolate avocado mousse. I don't want to bore you with some of the other stuff that I do tend to cook with. These, I was showing you salmon and tuna in these little packs that store really well because it's a nice source of protein. But then I will get these packets. And again, the reason I use these packets instead of having quinoa and rice and all of the beans and everything is because cooking time, which saves on fuel and it doesn't need water. These are pre-cooked and you just warm it up on the skillet and add whatever you want. So this is quinoa and brown rice and lentils together. So packed with protein and good stuff for you. And again, easy to cook add all the little ingredients that you want to, and it makes a really good quick meal. So I love these things, but they're pretty straightforward in terms of preparation and nothing new, really. If you love to cook and you want to pressurize your beans and all of that, go for it because that is probably the best way to have them. But in this type of environment, for me, those have been a lifesaver because I also have this container I have two of these and they are filled with those types of meals and I can go off grid and be somewhere for a month, two months and never run out of meals. So there you go in case you were wondering. My battery died so I took a break, went on a walk, came back, did the chopping so that you don't have to watch it. So I simply chopped up some cucumber, my onions, the little bell peppers, some carrots, and some spinach arugula mix. And you can put whatever you want. If you have a grater, even better, because you can grate them up all finely because it's just easier to eat a wrap or a roll when they're a little more thinly cut than a big one because then you're biting into a big chunk of something. So I do it that way. Then you will simply take one of these outside leaves. And if you don't like cabbage or this kind of green cabbage, you can use purple cabbage or you can use any kind of lettuce you want that's big enough to hold this. And then just like this is a tortilla or normal wrap, you begin to put your veggies in however you want. You could add hummus or any kind of cheese. And since I don't have those things, I'm not adding them. But you simply do this and then roll them up. Now, the most fun part of this, like this is pretty normal. I mean, anybody can make a wrap, right? Is a fun little sauce, peanut sauce that I have for you. So. I'll put this aside and show you how to make the sauce. This is an alternative to regular peanut sauces you see out there, a semi whatever you got ingredients version of that. So I hope you like it. These are 32 gram packets, which I think is an eighth of a cup maybe. So then two of these together is a quarter cup. So 64 grams, I believe. 
tell me if I'm doing that right. All of the recipes that I am giving you are for one person because I'm one person. So you'll have to do the math if you want to add that. But I figure most of you who are watching this are going to be doing it for yourself or maybe two people. And all you have to do is double it. And then you can, you know, if you have more people, you just triple it or quadruple it or whatever. None of this is precise science either. And I have pretty much just been playing around with tastes and recipes and got something that is a good equivalent for the things that I am trying to present to you and so they're not exact recipes you play with it however it works for you so then a half a tablespoon of this is about one and a half teaspoons of the oil and maple syrup same so and again i'm sorry i'm not doing the metric conversions of this I'm not very good at that. I'm not used to the regular conversions of it either. So then tahine, which for me is just uh, all spice because I love the flavor and you can't really go wrong. So uh, half, I don't even know, I'm not even gonna measure it. Just shake it in there. And then lemon or lime, and I think I'm gonna use lime. And that again is about one tablespoon. So about three squeezes of this and then just mix it around and peanut sauce is supposed to be you know not really thick uh, in fact you'll find it in a lot of different consistencies what I want is for it to be either dippable or drizzleable drizzleable able to drizzle onto my wraps so or dip if you had a whisk or a blender again use it I don't so I'm using my hand so I think I'm going to add a little bit of water yeah I would usually just use that and either dip it or spoon it onto my wrap on the end here but I want to plate it and make it look pretty for you so this is how I would do it if I were serving it to a friend or something. Let's see. Come on over here. See if you can look down on that. All right. So then, <laughs> it's not, it's not as creamy as I would like, but, but then there you have it. A beautiful little wrap with some fun peanut sauce. I am eager to have a bite. The heaviness of the peanut sauce mixed with the lightness of all the little crispy vegetables is just wonderful. So hope you enjoy this. And again, substitute anything you want. Mm. So good. So good. I forgot to show you that I will often top things like my green beans or my rice and veggies or my beans and rice or my salads with nutritional yeast because it is something for people who don't eat a lot of meat, good source of vitamin Bs. I know some people don't like the flavor. I love the flavor. It just tastes like I don't know, Parmesan or something like that. But if you mix it in right, it's really good for you. And it adds some protein, like eight grams of protein and a lot of fun vitamins. So just thought I would add that because I know that I mentioned this last time and some of you may not understand the use of it, but for people who don't get a lot of meat and protein from other sources, nutritional yeast is really important. With my dietary restrictions, I can't eat things like donuts. The only time that I can is when I'm at a vegan restaurant or bakery that does those types of things. And I, again, have to be careful that they're not using corn or soy, even if they're not using egg. But I am going to make you a fun little alternative donut. It's a fry bread basically and somebody asked me how I use my yeast it's too cold right now basically this recipe with some yeast will make the dough rise a little bit more so you will have like a puffy fry bread 
instead of a more flat fry bread. And that is how I sometimes use that yeast. But again, I was going to show you, but it's too... There's too many elements that would make it probably flop because of the temperature, but this should be fine. While I am mixing up some of this other stuff, I am going to put this over here and I'm going to start some oil. You can use whatever kind of oil you use, a quarter cup in there, and this is a eight to 10 inch pan. So I will get that warming up while I mix the ingredients which is really easy. I will take one of my little bowls. These are just so easy for me to use. And these are for one serving. This is power flour. Somebody I think made a comment that these things have a lot of preservatives in them. They don't. This has 100% whole wheat grain flour, wheat protein isolate, chickpea protein, and whey protein protein concentrate. So that is what gives it its 10 grams of protein. I figure if I'm going to have carbs, I may as well have carbs that are also packed with protein that I can eat. If you can't have wheat, which I have no problem with wheat, but in that case you could have pea protein flour, almond flour, whatever you want, but this doesn't have anything in it that I can't have. Then I'm going to add some, I'm going to turn this down a little bit, I don't want to get too, too hot. I'm taking too long to explain, so I'll turn that off. This is basically one tablespoon, which is about three teaspoons, of this egg replacer, which is just potato starch, tapioca flour, and baking soda, and psyllium husk. So it's got four ingredients that I can read that are in there. And some people can use flaxseed or chia. Somebody in the comments told me chickpea juice from a can of chickpeas could substitute for an egg. So there's lots of alternatives. I have found this one and I love it. So it takes twice as much water. So you would put in two tablespoons of water to, I know I can't know if I counted that right. But this is what I'll do. I'll, I'll do the egg up first. This is the consistency of it, just like an egg would be, right? And then a cup to a three quarter cup of mix. I mean, I don't know, maybe that's more like a half cup to a three quarter cup, depending on how many you want. This is gonna make maybe one, two. And then you put half of whatever you put in terms of the flour in, in water. And then just mix that around so that it is a consistency like a pancake, but maybe a little more thick than a pancake. And for the other fry bread with yeast, you would do this same thing, but make it more like a dough consistency because it will have the yeast that will make it rise. With this one, you can play around with the consistency. I've done it both ways where it's runny, when it's not runny, when it's a little more like drippy like this, uh, then you don't need to knead it out or anything and you can just lay it in the pan in whatever configuration you want. Important because there is going to be oil on this. I'm going to get this ready because you're going to want to put it in a plate or something afterwards to soak up that oil. So I will put this right here. Oops, where's my water? Yeah, that's my water. That's what you want to hear. I'm just going to turn it down a little bit now. So then I will try to get this on here and show you. So it's basically you're frying a pancake is probably what this is, but I love it because it just gives me that fun consistency of a donut because it's fried, obviously. So that's what it'll look like. And obviously you want it to bubble and see how that is bubbling there and getting a little crispy brown right there. So then very carefully, you're gonna want to take this and Flip it over. Once you let it crisp on that side, it is pretty much a little fry bread. I don't eat a lot of fried foods or things like that, so I'm not worried about it. If you are, like I would stay away from it. Now, in this case, what I would do is add, well, here, I'm gonna make this up and then we'll talk about that. So I wanted to clean things up a little bit so that I could show you. Now I use honey and I will use my sugar, my 
cinnamon and make a little cinnamon sugar. Mm, okay, so I can have a variety of different donuts. So here are my donuts, a little crispy, right? But it's still all the way through, kind of like mm, a crawler. Then sprinkle a little, I should have done it probably while it was a little bit more hot. And to me, it gives that fried dough taste that a donut does. So it's actually a protein packed donut, healthiest version of a donut that I know of. Mm. I can't be outside right now. So to be able to do all that I've done in a really small space, hopefully encourages you that you can have fun with it. It doesn't have to be eating out all the time or eating outside all the time. I have my setup specifically thinking of that, that I would be cooking inside and not wanting to open my doors. Like if I'm at a Walmart or something, I can still cook. I just have to crack something open. I usually crack my door a little bit and let the steam go out that way. Uh, not too stealth that way, but <laughs> I can do it and I feel safe doing it. And I have plenty of room, especially with this little add-on table, but I will use my little burner stove and my skillet and you've seen what I can do with that. So I hope it encourages you to experiment too and to find new recipes. I hope that you like some of these. I hope that you try them and let me know how it works for you. I have all sorts of other meals that I could show you, but yes, I'm running out of time. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. So now I set my camera a little closer so you can see. I'm gonna get my baking soda, my coconut oil, and my peppermint. This is what I keep my toothpaste in. So this is how easy it is. If you have a bigger jar of the unrefined coconut oil where it's solid at room temperature, you're gonna wanna use that. Two tablespoons of the coconut oil and two teaspoons of baking soda. Okay. Mix it all around. And then you add drops of essential oil. I like to put eight to 12. Come on, eight, nine, 10. And you just do that according to your flavor desire. And then you just stir it around until the baking soda. I usually add the baking soda a little bit slower than I did. I was getting ahead of myself just so that you can not get so much powder in there and you just mix it until the powder is mixed in with the cream of the coconut oil. It gets to a pasty consistency. It'll always be more like granules than a normal toothpaste, but I think that's the point kind of. So it will get to this type of a consistency and I try to get the chunks out and just make sure that it's all smooth, kind of like with our mousse. And that is my toothpaste. Then I add it to this little jar and there's no, I just use this because I had it and I didn't want to waste it. And as long as it stays at room temperature, it stays this consistency. So that is what it looks like. And then it just stores in my little bag.